Hello fellow freaks, geeks, and normies. Today we're going to be going over Steam's Next Fest that just concluded. I played 11 games, 11 games that I thought were going to be interesting, and some definitely were, and some definitely were not. If this is your first time here, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And catch me live on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash Donuts. I'm live Sunday through Wednesday in the evening, PST times. So catch me live there, twitch.tv slash Donuts. So let's just get right into it. The games are listed on here right now on screen. This is the list of games that I played in order, but the list that I'm going to be presenting them in right now is actually the least favorite to my most favorite demo. So let's jump right in. Let's start off with number 11. My least favorite demo that I played was Dad by the Sword. This is a Kickstarter game currently in beta. The release date is June 15th, 2023. Currently there's no controller support and I don't know if that would actually help this game. This game itself is very clunky, it has clunky controls. It's like you're relearning how to just play video games in general. I don't know if the bad controls is part of the gimmick of it or the appeal of it, but just was not for me. Like as an example, the combat is um, kind of like For Honor where you can attack high, left, right, that sort of thing, but very not optimized. For Honor got it right, this game got it completely wrong. You can see that in some of my gameplay, just to swipe right, you move to the right, and just to hit left, you move to the left a little bit. There's not a way that you can just stand still and then guard left, guard right, attack right, attack left, attack up. It's it, You have to move in the way that you are swinging before you actually swing. That is my main complaint of it. It feels very unnatural, it feels very clunky, and the game itself is obviously not taking itself too seriously, like you're you're killing hot dogs and stuff, so, and ketchup. Yeah, not my favorite art direction either, so all in all, not for me. Didn't wishlist it, but you can make your decision for yourself. Next up at number 10, we got God of Rock. This will be releasing on April 18th, 2023. It is a 2D fighter, but with a rhythm twist to it. It is an interesting concept for sure, but I believe that the difficulty spike at the beginning is going to make it very hard for people to get into. It is very much, um, very much like Street Fighter where you can do some special moves, quarter circles, a whole 360, all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, you are playing a rhythm game. And for me personally, that's a little bit too much to keep track of. And I'm not saying that I'm bad at rhythm games. I'm actually fairly good at them, but this one just takes it to the next level. And I, again, I think that initial difficulty spike is gonna cause people to not wanna play it for much longer. I will say that I am not a fan of horizontal side scrolling for the notes to come up. I am a purist when it comes to that, I guess. I played games like DDR, Beatmania, Rock Band, all of those have vertical note charts. Whereas this one has a horizontal side scrolling note chart and I am not good at those at all. It's awkward to read that and do special moves at the same time. The perfectionist in me wants to be able to do everything, hit all the notes, do the special moves, land a combo, do all those things. But again, it is extremely difficult to get into. So I, for me, that's why it lands itself at number 10. Next up, this one is going to be a bit controversial, but at number nine, we got Dark and Darker. This is the sort of sword and sorcery style Tarkov game, and it is blowing the fuck up on Twitch right now. Um, everyone is all about it. Everyone's having fun with it, but apparently not me. It is just not my type of game. I tried playing it, so I did watch some high level gameplay of it. And for me personally, it's very, it's almost too slow. I kind of want to get this to the action pretty quick. And this sort of game requires just a little bit more potentially strategy, which I don't have the mindset for. Again, it's just not my, my, my type of game. Much like Valheim, everyone's about that game, not my type of game. I might just skip out on Dark and Darker. Everyone can have fun with it. Again, not for me. That's why it lines itself at number nine. Next up, we got Cyclo Chambers. Looks like this will be releasing on 
February 21st, 2023. At first glance, it does look like a Vampire Survivors clone, but it is not. So it's a twin stick shooter in the likes of Super Stardust, Geometry Wars. So you are you only have the, the single space that you are shooting in and you just try to clear the waves of enemies that come through. And that's basically it. I had a great time playing it. I completed the full demo, got all four characters unlocked and, and beat all of the levels on hard mode. And the only gripe I have with it is that the initial controller setup was not set up properly. It was asking you for twin stick shooter to use your actual buttons to shoot in the certain directions. So for me, I am on dual sense. So it was to shoot left, I press square. To shoot right, I press circle. To shoot up, I press triangle. I did eventually obviously have to change that to the right stick and that made it a lot more enjoyable. Other than that, the game itself, fun. It has high replay value, really easy to get into. So that's why it lands itself at number eight on this list. Coming up at number seven, we got The Hungry Fly. This is a game that is coming soon, TM <laughs> 2023. This is a walking sim sort of horror-esque game, or should I say flying sim? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, anyway, it is an interesting take. Might be worth a play actually in the long run. That's why it lands itself at number seven, but the demo made me curious about the world. And I think that's obviously a good thing for a demo to make me think about why I'm there and what could the world give me? Where can it take me? What kind of stories is this game going to tell? And it did give a warning in the very beginning. It said it had to do with depression and self-harm. And for whatever reason, those are the stories that I am actually intrigued by. So that's why The Hungry Fly lands itself at number seven. Next up, we got Robo Dunk releasing in 2023. Don't know when, no set date, no set month. This just seems like a pure and fun party game. It was fun to play when it was just myself. So I imagine myself and three other friends playing a 2v2 basketball style game much in the vein of NBA Jam with robots and power moves and dunking all over the place. It was awesome. It was really fun. Again, just playing it by myself, it was a good time. So I imagine with three other people, it can make for some uh, pretty, pretty hype moments. That's what brings Robo Dunk to number six. Number five, we got Deceive Inc. from the creators of Killing Floor. We got it from Tripwire. This is going to be releasing May 21st, 2023. And this seems like a good premise. So if you if you haven't heard about this game, it is that you are essentially cloaked in normal attire, but you are actually a spy. You are trying to deceive and gain intel. And there are, I believe, seven other people who are doing the same thing, looking like everybody else in the game. So it is your job, not only to steal intel and to get the big loot prize at the end, but it's also to make sure that that doesn't happen on the other end. So you are actually trying to find the imposters throughout the area, just based on how they're acting, how they're walking, what they're doing. And yeah, it, it was an interesting time when I played it. I enjoyed it a lot. There's a nice little rank up system. I think that there's a lot of things that they can do. Much like in Killing Floor, they had a nice um, skill tree for each of the characters. So I think that this game could do really well and I think it would be actually a, a pretty good time. In general, it looks like it could just be a fun game just to jump into. Again, just for fun. No competitive nature to it. Just going into it, you should just not feel the pressure to win. And I think that's probably the biggest part of it. You should think of it more like a game of Fall Guys because the games end pretty quick or, or they can at least. So it's kind of just drop in, drop out, just do whatever you can do and try to find the imposters throughout. Deceive Inc. lands itself at number five. At number four, we got City of Beats. This lands quarter three of 2023. This is a twin stick shooter and the guns automatically shoot to the beat of the music, which it adds to the gameplay quite a bit. And it, it's just, again, fun just to be around. It looks really nice, set in a cyberpunky sort of city. But yeah, enemies themselves are actually pretty difficult. The demo itself, even though it was set on easy, it was actually pretty difficult. I did not go back to play it on the normal setting, but yeah, it was, again, a good time. The bullets shoot on time with the music, adds another layer of fun to the game. And, and based on the levels that you're going through, you can pick up different um, abilities, different 
things for the run before you get to the main boss so each run can be i believe potentially a little bit different than the last that's what makes city beats land at number four number three we got nocturnal this will be landing quarter two of 2023 this is a straight up side scroller game it is linear gameplay it has a nice aesthetic good music and the music itself actually accentuates the the demo quite a bit and the gameplay quite a bit so hopefully there's a lot more to look forward to with regard to the score the combat was clean and compact it feels punchy every hit feels like there's weight to it the movement was fluid for the most part climbing up jumping all that sort of stuff it felt really again it felt really clean there was a nice flow in combat and it also looked really really pretty the effects that the fire had in the darkness and some of the initial gimmicks in the game where you kind of have to stay in light so that you, that you don't die that that itself was a, a nice little change of pace it added for some nice problem solving some puzzles in the game again it's not a metroidvania not anything like that it is a pure side scroller you have to make your make your way from point a to point b playing this demo I was wondering if there's going to be more abilities other than just fire, although depending on the upgrade path, a lot of fire moves could end up being pretty cool because I did end up unlocking a couple of those moves and it did obviously change up the gameplay. So Nocturnal, number three. Up next at number two, Slave Zero X. This one actually does not have a set release date. This is also a side scroller. As far as I'm aware, it, there is no Metroidvania aspects to it. It is just a difficult no. game. This is kind of like Nocturnal in the sense that, again, side scroller, but this is a lot more gory. There's a lot more combos to be had even in the game description they want you to play it more like a style game add your own flair to all the different things that are happening like devil may cry at the end of each mission you did have a grade that it would, it would give you and again there's a nice flow to the combat you can land crazy combos and i assume that they just get crazier the more you upgrade your character it's voice acted which actually wasn't cringe at all for the most part as far as what i heard so nice art direction nice pixel art it was just overall a really nice breath of fresh air something i would want to play i'm looking forward to playing it when it comes out whenever that may be it is again a very difficult demo so just keep that in mind it, it's not just hack and slash even though that's part of the description too don't play it like oh, that yeah. so yeah Sorry. slave zero number two on the list finally at number one we got meet your maker this is going to be releasing on april 4th this game is from the makers of dead by daylight and i was pleasantly surprised by this this is a game and the reason why it's on number one is because it's a game that i feel like i can spend so much time in that i can go into and find some different maps that people have made and just go through it and try to solve their puzzles in the demo you're not forced to make your own little little level but i did and got, got the creative juices flowing how can i fuck over somebody who's trying to beat this level because there's there is a reward as well um when you do make a level that is difficult to beat you get rewarded for that so the main thing in this game is it's an extraction game where you just have to find your way to this little crystal and you have to make your way back to the rendezvous point to leave to go back to your home base that being said it's obviously not that easy there are traps there are goons there are guards there's everything that you can imagine that will try to kill you along the way i made a very basic one and i felt awesome when it gave me the notification that i killed somebody i went into the hardest difficulty level that somebody can make it just got me more excited about the game. There are so many other things that I didn't even have access to because I didn't play the game very much that if I were to make a, a map like that or something like that, I would be extremely excited to not only play through it, but to get people killed in there. So, Meet Your Maker. Really awesome premise, really awesome game. So, that is the list of the games that I played on this Steam's Next Fest. These 11 games were all games I thought that I was going to like. Some of them really bummed me out but some of them pleasantly surprised me. If you like content like this, please again, remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below about some of the games that you guys have played during this Steam Next Fest. If any at all, what were your favorite games? Again, you can catch me live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash leodonuts. I am live on Sundays through Wednesday evening times PST. And 
yeah, that's basically it. I guess I'll see y'all in the next one.